Hey guys, I'm Emily Powers and today I'm going to be painting this uh, starry night with a cabin. Um, it's probably going to be a little harder than uh, some of the other tutorials we've done, but I think it shouldn't be too bad. Um, the reference photo is from Pixabay and um, we're using acrylic paint. So the colors I'm using are titanium white, cadmium yellow medium, this is sap green, so I just wanted a duller green than the phthalo green that I use, and then phthalo blue, burnt sienna, and burnt umber, and I might use some glazing liquid, possibly, like when we do the shadow of the roof and maybe that fire, I'm not sure, but... I have it to the side in case I need it. And then for the background, I'm gonna use a one inch bright for like the sky and just the first filling in stage. And then my smaller brushes, I have a fan, a bristle fan for like these uh, parts in the trees. And then a probably like a quarter inch flat or something close, it's small. And then a small round for like the cabin and things like that. So I'm gonna set that to the side. And I've also got a watercolor pencil, or not a watercolor pencil, it's a scribal pencil, but it's water soluble. You could also use a watercolor pencil. And uh, I'm gonna just take my spray bottle and spray my canvas real quick. And so, if you split it into like half it and half it again, so do it in fourths, then right about there is where the uh, edge of the snow is going to be. Maybe a little higher than that. And then it's going to slope down. It's kind of mixing with that water I just sprayed down, but it's okay because it's going to wipe off later. And then come down to about the fourth exactly. So it's kind of above the fourth here, and then it slopes down to the fourth. Actually kind of slopes, but has a curve upward more than in. I'm going to get my uh, rag and just wet it and get that other line off. So you can see it comes off with water and if I tried to get it all off it would it would come off pretty easy. So then it's going to go down and start sloping and it's going to end about right there. And then the cabin's gonna be like right in here somewhere. Okay, and then the trees are gonna be kind of all in here. But we don't really have to draw them in right now because uh, we're gonna put paint on top of that part. Okay, so first I'm going to take the phthalo blue and burnt sienna and it's going to darken the blue and kind of make it almost like a teal, like a, not really like a teal, but it's similar to teal. It's not like a bright blue. And got a hair in it. And I'm just going to put that across. I'm going to need to make more of it. I didn't make quite enough. And add some water to it so that it'll flow better. I may even add 
some of the burnt umber so it will be a little darker. And it's almost doing like this curving motion. It's easier to see when you get down and go lighter, but Okay, and then I'm going to mix up some, just a little bit of white to it. So it just barely lightens it. Put that below. You can see that it's lighter than the other color. And you know what? I didn't put my uh, thing under it so that it wouldn't shine. Okay, that's better. Without that under there it's just you can't really see what I'm doing so okay and then I'm going to get more white and just kind of put some uh, whiskey Kind of make it look a little bit like clouds back there. Okay, and I might just take that and just put it a little further just to make sure that I got it all and then I'm going to take the dark with burnt umber and phthalo blue and put that together so it'll be dark I may even add a little bit of the green because it is good to have trees back here. And just put that I'm just going to put that down there so that the trees have something to work off of. It's really not, not really defining anything. I'm just putting dark behind them so that, you know, there will be some color back there. If I just left it plain, I, you know, if I had had any parts that I could see where I didn't actually put a tree there then it would have the white so just in case you miss any spots with the next part I'm putting that I want
want to get most of this off. It looks like it's kind of wanting to hang on there. It's not really... Man, my water is already like dark blue. <laughs> so you can st see it still has some of that. But it's okay because I don't want pure white for the snow. I want it to have a little bit of blue in it. But you want it pretty light. So it's like a light blue teal. My cat is wanting attention. We like just got home and she's like, you just got here. Can you play with me? I pet her a little bit before I started filming so that maybe she would kind of calm down a little bit and wouldn't bother me while I was painting, but she always wants attention even if I just gave it to her. Okay, so you just want to put in the sky and behind the trees and the first layer of the snow, and then what I'm going to do is blow dry it and come back and do more of the sky and uh, trees and things like that. So I'm gonna blow dry it and come back. Okay, so now that this is dry, I'm gonna go to the next step. So I'm going to basically do what I did to the sky a second time, just to make sure that it's good and covered because I can kind of see through a little bit. So I'm not going to add as much burnt sienna this time and see what happens. It needs something else. So I'm going to get some more burnt umber than burnt sienna this time with a lot of the phthalo blue. Okay, and then I'm going to get some of the white, just a little bit, that was way too much. <laughs> it's like I just want to tint it, I don't want to, we may use that color right there in a minute. And get some more blue out. I didn't, I thought that would have been enough blue, but I guess not. So lighten it up a little bit and put it down below. So you could keep going in that curved motion. And then I'm going to get some of that lighter. And I'm going to take the edge of my brush and kind of try to start from the middle and then go out. And then wipe off your brush and go from where you last stopped. And then you can go back from the middle and it kind of blends it out. Okay. I'll take some more and put it over here. And 
And then I'll put some of it and kind of brush it in over here. Okay. Just blending it out. And then when you get it the way you like it, stop. I'm going to raise it up so I can see what I'm doing. I may put a little bit more out a little further. I'm just going to kind of do like that to kind of soften it all up. Okay, so then once you got the clouds, what I'm going to do is take this dark color we had and start kind of putting in tree texture with this big brush. So do some vertical for the ends and some slanted for the parts poking out. So like all down here, I'm just going to kind of slant it so that I got that texture. And I'm probably going to take some more and mix that up. It was the phthalo blue, burnt sienna, and sap green. And I'm adding the green to it because there are trees. It doesn't look like it has a whole lot of green, but you know it's there. It's just like a really dark color. And then I'm going to put one here. And I'll, you know, go out some because this is not really when I'm building up the texture. I'm just doing the texture down here. So you could put like your stalks and then tap in where you want the rest of the tree. You can do a little bit. So it's not just like just up there, but at the bottom, I don't want it too uh, bumpy yet. So I'm just skipping some spots and Then the spots I do put in some, I'm tapping. So I start by doing, you know, the line, and then I come in and do the tapping on sideways. And you don't have to follow the picture exactly. You can put these trees wherever you want. I'm just kind of using it somewhat.
And then I'll put one right here. And if your paint that's back here starts to dry and you get lifting happening, you may just want to stop and deal with that. Just dry it so that you don't get any issues with lifting. And these trees are really fun. You, it's kind of hard to see at the moment because um, they're so dark. I mean, you can see them pretty well, but it's you know harder to see the texture and things until we get the rest on here. I'm going to leave a big gap in between these two since I've been doing quite a few that are close together. And then I'll do this tree over here that's tall. And there's one right next to it. And then there's some in here. Okay, so that's pretty good, I think. And now, I probably should have done the stars before I did this, but, well, it's going to be okay. No, I'll, I'll do it. The trees will have snow anyway, so if we get some stars in the tree it will look just like snow since the stars are white too so I'm not gonna worry about that and then this snow color I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt sand to it maybe a little bit of burnt umber And I'm gonna put that down again. So now it's a little more brown. I mean, it's still got some of that blue in it from last time, but it's more brown this time. Just, just barely brown. It's really not, it's not super brown. And then wipe my brush off and get pure white and put that at the top and then spread it out. And blend them together. Okay, now I'm going to dry it again and come back. Okay, so now that I've dried it, it's still not completely dry. 
the trees are a little wet, but we can still do some of the other things besides the trees. So I've got an old toothbrush. You can see I've used it several times before uh, with paint. So I'm going to dip it in my water and take the white and you want to water it down quite a bit. You may want to get new water for this if your water's super blue by now, but you, what you want to do is take your thumb and spray it like that. You want to make stars. So once you get it to the right consistency, just sprinkle them in there. And then if I get any that I don't want or that are too bright, I'll just go and kind of tap them out. So, if there's any that I don't like or anything like that, I'll just take my wet paper towel and pull them off. Okay? So, it looks pretty good. So, now I'm going to rinse my toothbrush out. <laughs> So if you're using this, uh, just uh, you can also do a fan brush. So we're I'm about to pull that out in a minute. So you could also use this and water it out real good and tap like that, and it would do pretty much the same thing. But I think you can get smaller dots with the toothbrush, and I think it's a little easier when you don't know or haven't used this before. So it just depends on what you like to do, but um, I'm going to take this white and, well, let me take my sap green first and I'm going to take some of this dark color so that's darkening it up, but it is still a lot more green than we had. And I may get some phthalo blue because it's, I think it's a little more of a dull bluish green. And some burnt umber. And you could use like phthalo green or, you know, whatever green you want. Just, you would have to dull it more because this set green is like. I think it's already like phthalo green with burnt umber or something like that, so it's already dull. So I'm going to take it and just kind of do it sideways some, and that'll give the impression of leaves all bunched up together. I want to dull it a little more because even though it's dark, you really aren't going to see this too much, but I do want to kind of dull it just a little. I don't want it so bright green. So near the top of the trees, you're just going to do these tapping like we did earlier. And then once you get down here, you're going to kind of use the side and go in different directions and kind of lay them in that way. So it's like the stalk, the stalk, and then it brushes out. It's kind of hard to do on this glass palette, but it you can maybe see it in the picture. It's kind of got some leaves coming down. You could use the round brush too. I'm going to use a round brush when I get to this part for the snow. But right now, so I'm tapping and then I go 
diagonal and kind of down a little bit. So go diagonal and then brush down so it'll pull it. And there's some uh, spots over here I didn't cover. I'm just going to try to cover those up. Okay. Now I'm going to make sure I can see this. See if there's anything else I want to do. I'm really liking it already. I didn't, I thought this was going to come together kind of slow, which I guess it has been kind of a while, but I thought it was going to be a lot longer, which the cabin's probably going to take a while because it's so small, but I thought it was going to be like one of those paintings you get into it and you're like, oh great, now what do I do? I just, this kind of scared me a little bit, but it's really not, it's not too bad so far anyway. So now I'm going to take my white and burnt umber and there's like some kind of weird grass over here I'm going to put in. He's kind of coming over too. And then I'll take the white. And put some of that with it. And really there's, I'll take some of this dark color. There's like a tree right here. And I'm going to take that green and kind of put the, the tree coming off right there okay and then there's going to be some I'm going to rinse that brush out and get my round to put some tree trunks and I'm going to get the burnt umber with whatever else is here And maybe some burnt sienna or something. And maybe a little bit of yellow. And then draw in some tree trunks. Some small and some big so it looks like some are farther away than others. So if you enjoy this video, um, please like and subscribe There's and check out the other videos on my channel. I have some other painting tutorials and some are harder. This one's probably one of the harder ones. And then there's some easier tutorials like for beginners. So whether you're just starting or you've been doing it a while, you, you should have something there for you. And if you do do one of my paintings, um, you can 
share it with me on my Facebook group that I made um, specifically for sharing paintings you've done for my tutorials. Um, and I'm, I'm also going to have some polls um, run, like before like when I'm making the schedule for the next month. I'll have some uh, polls. Not for April though because I kind of have that one done already, but for other months I'm going to have a poll. So you can check that out and join that. Okay, so I did some of the like bluer trunks just to give it a different color. And now I'm getting some of the yellow and burnt sienna. I'm not turning it green. I don't want a green. Because I have that blue, so. I want it like orange. Because on one of these trees, or more than one actually, there's like a glow from the fire. So I'm going to put that, make it look like it's glowing. And then if I put too much, I can go back with that color and go over it. But this tree right here is going to have the most glow. And then I'm going to take some of my white and kind of put some grass in different directions so that it looks like the snow is on top of the grass and it's kind of uneven. The more random you make it, the more real it is because if you try to make a painting like perfect, then it's, you know, if they, if you take a flower and you're thinking, oh, that, you know, that direct direction looks kind of funky. No, not always. Sometimes if it looks funky, you really don't want it. But sometimes if you don't make it that way and you just like make it, try to make it perfect, it'll end up looking fake like you just kind of came up with it. So you don't want to change it and make it too perfect. If there's something in there that you don't like, you can take it out, but just don't change it to where it looks fake. And I'm doing a few strands of snow on this side. Okay. And then I'm going to take this dark and put that shadow in again. And I'll take that and put like a trunk, in case you can see it. Okay. And I'm going to do some snow above here. Oops, I got a water drop. Okay. And then I'm going to rinse my brush out and get my fan brush and take that green we were using and put some over these trunks. I put them high up kind of so that, you know, you could see them in the green, but they're not that quite so high. So I'm going to kind of, you don't see them as much. I'm going to put that over there. And you're not really seeing any trunks over here. It's kind of dark. Okay. And now, I think it might be okay to do some snow. So, 
I'm just gonna get a little bit of white on my fan brush and start over here. And I'm just tapping and swiping. And on this tree, it's mainly coming out from this direction. You don't want to put too much or else it'll just kind of look like a white tree. You just want it to have enough that it looks like... Uh, no on it. And there's like these little upside down V kind of shapes over here. I'm using the corner of my brush at some points to kind of do different shapes. So I see a shape and it's, you know, not like straight across. If it's different, then I'll do a different brush stroke in that direction. If it gets too bright, you can wipe it off. All got too bright right there. And if you get too much, you can also get some of the green and go back later. I don't think it'll really work right now, but once it dries, you can do that. So I'm just looking at the different directions. This one's kind of... I mean, one's, this one's one single tree, so you can really see the direction. So on one side, it goes one way, and then in the middle, it kind of goes straight down, and then on the other side, it does this on the, that way. And it's kind of hard to tell how high it goes. Maybe this high. And I'm putting this behind it. The 
there's kind of one back here that's got some on the edges. But not really in the middle. So some of them don't have as much. My kitty's being good. She's not disturbing me. Sometimes when I'm painting, she'll come up and like pat me. Like, you okay? Can you pay attention to me now? There was one time I had like really large canvas on the table and she came over and put her paw on the corner. <laughs> I'm like, I'm glad that part wasn't wet. You would have gotten her paw print in it. Okay, so this part takes a while. This is, I expect it to be kind of like around two hours or somewhere around there. So this, this part's going to take probably the most time. And just once you get it to where you like it, you can stop there. If, you know, if I put more snow and you like it the way it is, or you're afraid you're going to mess it up, just, just keep it the way it is. Sometimes I'm like, you know, I feel like I can make it better, but at the same time, I like it so much already, I don't want to make, mess it up. So you can keep going and try to make it better, or you can stop. So... If you, you know, think that later you would be like, you know, I wish I had tried to make it better. Then if you think you're going to be, you know, wishing you had done it, then you should probably do it. But otherwise, just leave it the way it is. And I'm going to put some white snow right here. Out of that grass real quick. So I'm putting it like on the edges of these. So you don't really have it throughout the whole tree. The tops are kind of bare. They don't really have as much or as... Uh, you can't see it quite as much. It's not as bright. And even back here, we could, you know, add more white later. See how it's brightening it up, brightening it up, so. And you could use, you know, if you don't like the fan brush, you could probably use a small round for this part or something and, you know, draw, drag the line and then flip down. But I think it's really much easier to do with this brush. Okay, I'm going to just start over on this side. And it starts, I think there's some kind of going in all directions, but mainly up this way. And then there's some start coming out.
And you can kind of define the stalk of where it's coming out if you want to, but you don't have to because they don't all have um, stalks. You can clearly see some of them are kind of uh, just, uh, you know, they're not, some of them you can clearly see like a line and others you can just kind of see a little bit of snow on it, not a lot. Okay, so I'm going to go back with this dark, kind of tack back on top some of these to kind of get rid of the, some of the snow on them because they got a little much. Okay, and then you can go back with some white and kind of brighten up some of these spots because just one coat of white sometimes the white will kind of you know be a little see-through or something and you can't see it as good anymore So I'm just kind of adjusting it the way I want it to go. And what it kind of does over here is down here is not really have has doesn't really have as much snow. So I'm just kind of going to add more to the top, or the middle, really, and just stop there. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to take out some of this glazing medium now. Oops, kind of wants to come out on its own there. Okay, and I'm going to get my small round and take some of the yellow and some of this orangey and just get some of the burnt sienna with it because I want it to be more of an orange, not a yellow. And this will kind of make it a see-through color of course the yellow is already see-through so it will be see-through already slightly but so we're going to put some on the trees around the fire 
because they're all getting the glow. So this might look kind of weird at first. Just don't worry about it. It's going to be really neat when you get the rest of the painting in. When you actually see where the fire is, then it'll be neat. And I'm going to take some more of that white and put it right here. I kind of missed that section. Didn't really put any. But you want to make sure when you put this that the leaves you're doing it on are dry. So I'm not going to put any on that right now. Okay, just a little glow. Oops, and I got some blazing medium on that when I poured it out. Okay, so I think we can do our drawing now. So I got a black thing on my board. Okay, so if I mark the middle, then it's going to be around here that the cabin's roof is. So I guess right in from that is going to be where the side is. And then if you split it into thirds then the cabin is going to be kind of right on the f or fourth. Let's put it into fours. It's going to be right there. So we don't need that line. Uh, and it's going to kind of slant some. And let's see. So here's where the It is, and there's going to be some snow, so if you don't get the angles the same, it's going to be okay. And I'm going to get my white for the rest because you can't see it anymore, so I zoom in so you can see it better. I hope I don't forget that it zoomed in because that's happened. Okay, so put that there. It's kind of hard to see because there's white and black, so it makes it hard to tell where lines are. So there's the roof right here, and then it stops and goes up. Slightly until it gets to its point, and then this goes to that point and comes down. So these two lines are going to be parallel, and then this is pretty straight, and then this is kind of where the logs stop. And then there's this cabin, like the deck type thing, and a window. And so I'm not going to do all the details, but, and the fire is somewhere around here. But so I'm going to take my round brush and zoom back out. So you can see the the face filling in. So I'm going to do white and I'm going to lay it on pretty thick at the beginning because I know that it's going to show through at the beginning. It's going to have the trees and everything. So I'm going to have to do this more than once. But I'm laying it on pretty thick 
this first time. And then there's a slant up. Filling that in, and then this slant. We'll do that side and then see it comes to a point here and then there's this slant and back down. I'm doing that in white because the edge is snow covered so it's you're going to see it the white. Okay, and then I'm going to get the burnt umber with the blue, that'll make like a dark color, mainly burnt umber, and put that on the side. And you can do it sideways so that it'll maybe look like logs or something. But there's also some vertical like boards and things coming off of it. And there's also like a shadow that's coming off. And I'm going to get the burnt sienna and yellow. And a little bit of the burnt umber. So it's like an orange wood color. And I'm just going to fill that in at first because we don't need to do any like uh, we don't have to show the different colors quite yet because they'll you know you're, you're gonna have to cover over anyway so might as well do that in the next step but there's like a lip right here that you need to put a darker color, so I'm leaving that. And add water if it's not flowing well. And then I'm going to get this dark color and put it under the roof. get that color again and there's like this board that comes down to make sure I get it straight I'm gonna rinse my brush out and since it's wet I'm going to take I'm going to take the wet brush and kind of define the edge Okay a little bit. I'm 
seems like a board that comes across here and then down and across. Okay, so that's just the first layer of the barn. And I'm going to do this little campfire area. So get the yellow and put in. I'm going to get some of the white too. And put in like a little stick thing looking up here. <laughs> and then this color. There's a stick and then another stick that comes across this way. Okay, you might have to go over it more later, but for now, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to dry it and do the next step. Okay, so I zoomed in so you can see this next part. Now really what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and do what I just did over again. So I'm going to put more white. It's probably going to take several coats of white to cover this. And I really am, there's a brush I didn't end up using. I'm, the flat that I was going to use for the cabin, I'm just filling it in with this round. The smaller the brush is, the more details you can get in it. And then do along here. And then I'm going to rinse my brush out and take, I don't even know exactly what this dark color is, like phthalo blue and burnt umber and burnt sienna maybe. Put that under there. And over here. And I'm going to put it in that little shadow over there. And then I'm going to get this burnt sienna color and fill that in again. So this fire area over here, it's kind of, I don't know, it's like kind of weird because you can't see what's burning. It's just like glowing. It's weird. but. I, I can tell it's a fire because in the window it's shining off from the fire and then the trees are glowing so you can tell that that's where the fire is but it's weird it's like you can't see you can't see anything there you can't even really see a fire it's just the glow from it so it's kind of funny and there's like a picnic table type thing that's like right in front of the, right in front of the cabin and you don't have to put that in but I think I'm going to okay so you can see it covered better this time and I'm going to go back and do these little sticks I may even put some on the left side of this one and then go back with that yellow and this where the fire is these sticks it's almost like they made a little place where you take like put the uh, stick with like the food like meat or something on there and like turn it I don't know exactly what you call that but that's what it looks like to me
Okay, so I'm gonna try to do some more of this glow, like all around the trees and things. So I've got that burnt sienna, cadmium yellow medium, and glazing liquid again. So it's very light. I'm gonna go right here and put like a glow. It doesn't need to be that far, so I'm going to wet my brush and pull it back up. It doesn't need to be glowing down to the snow part. And then I'm going to take that color maybe with more yellow. So now it's got a little bit more yellow in it with the burnt sienna and the glazing medium. I'm going to go on the bottom of these trees or the bottom of these snow covered limbs and put some you can put a little bit kind of high but don't put too much too high and then some on this tree right here I may even get some white and kind of put that in and then cover it with the, the color later. And then I'm getting the dark that I used for the tree and going back over. Okay. This is drying now, so if it's not dry, don't do this part, but I'm getting like burnt sienna and burnt umber with maybe some of that phyllo blue and mixing them together and putting some boards up against this and then I'm getting the white and putting some of that too much right there Then I'm getting in and kind of putting some snow on the boards. I'm getting that blue color, putting some of that in there. I'm just making it look like they were like dragged through the snow or something. Okay, and then I'm going to take some of the burnt sand and burnt umber. And about right here, I'm going to drag the brush across and it's going to be like the logs in this cabin. So I'm going to try to double load so I'm going to mix some of the yellow and white with a little bit of burnt sienna. So on one side I'm getting the uh, burnt umber and uh, burnt sienna and the other side I'm getting the light yellow burnt sienna color. So I'm going to have the light color facing down. and drag it and make like boards and it's going to be lighter at the bottom because the bottom is kind of where the uh, white is hitting under there it's not going to be perfect the first time, but double loading it like that will kind of give us a head start. Okay. 
okay and then on this part it's kind of oops too high I'm gonna wash my brush out so I can pick that oops just the water drops just like fall right off my brush sometimes and very very annoying it's like I when I wash my brush I pick it up and then it falls okay so now I get in the dark color and I'm gonna kind of put some circular things right on the edge like where the uh, logs are facing us straight on and I'm getting some of this blue color and putting some of that on this side and then the lighter color for this these boards and then I'm taking that lighter and putting straight down from here I'm gonna get some cadmium yellow medium with some white and a little bit of burnt sienna but it's mainly yellow and then I'm getting some darker brushing that on and then I'm going to get the light yellow that I just made and just put it on the bottom of all these and on these edges some um, And there's these like boards that come across here. Okay, so we're getting pretty good. I want to make it more orangey though. I'm going to get some of the burnt sienna and the yellow. get some of the glazing medium I have to do it in a minute because it's kind of not wanting to And I'll get the yellow with white and lighten up these areas. Take the uh, darker and go over. Okay, now I'm going to rinse my brush out. And get some white cover over this. Probably going to be the last time, but we'll see once it's done. Okay, and then I'm going to get some of the cadmium yellow, just plain, 
and get some of this glowing. And then I'm going to get some of the white with the glazing medium and put that down here so that I can glaze over it when it's dry and change the color if I need to. And then I'm getting the white out the glazing medium. So I'm just doing plain white. And I'm going to put that in here. Okay, and then I'm going to get the dark color we use for back here and put a chimney right there and there's kind of some areas over there that you can still see the roof. So this one's really fun. It's really neat. Especially the fire. Makes it really cool. Okay, so then I'm gonna do the window. So I'm gonna get some of the burnt sienna and cadmium yellow. It may have a little white in it. I forget what exactly that color was, but And then I'm going to get some of the dark and put it on the side that the light wouldn't be hitting it as much. And then I'm going to get some plain white and put it right in the window. And then get some yellow with it and start adding it in, maybe pure, pure yellow actually. And then some burnt sienna. And I'm getting the white again, and I'm going to just pull up so that it looks like fire reflecting in the window. Okay, and then I'm getting the yellow with a little bit of burnt sienna I'm just kind of going over it to make it brighter and it's really more of an orangey than I made it but you can change that if you wanted to you probably have to put out a brighter orange to get it to that color And then I'm going to get the dark, like 
similar to here, but it's a little more burnt umber. And do shadow. Right there. And then the burnt sienna. I'm just trying to kind of change the color a little bit with burnt sienna and yellow. And then I'm getting the white again. Put that back. I keep getting water on here. Okay, and then I'm getting the yellow with the glazing liquid and putting more this and some of the burnt sienna so that it's got an orangey tint too. It's not all yellow. And that's still kind of wet. So there's like a, uh, well, let me do, I'm going to get the white and put white in front of here, anywhere that I see some white, so the snow is up against the cabin. So you don't really have to worry about it being even because there's snow up against it. So then I'm going to get burnt sienna, yellow, and white. And a lot of white. And then some burnt umber. So it's like a light brown. It's got quite a bit of white in it, so it's pretty light. And then I'm going to put it right here. It's like a picnic table or something like that. Pretty sure it's a picnic table. And I'm going to get this burnt umber mixture over here and kind of the shadow and get some more burnt umber to it and put it on one side so that it looks like it's glowing on one side and dark on the other. And then I'm going to get my white and put snow over this part. Big brush and get that white. And if it gets some yellow, it'll just kind of help with the glow effect. So you don't have to worry too much about it. Okay. So I just kind of went across and did some white and I'm just kind of looking to see what else I need to do. I'm going to get some more white for the roof. I said it would probably be the last time but it needs one more coat. And 
see some right there. And then I need that darker color just to go there better. Let's see if I can uh, do this light color. I'm getting burnt sienna and yellow. Now just yellow straight. Burnt sienna. Getting some of that glazing medium to glaze it out or blend it out. It's kind of a Pulling off what I did. I'm going to do the yellow. Yellow and then the orange. I'm just getting the glazing medium by itself and kind of fixing it the way I want it. Now this is white. And then I'm getting the glazing medium. And getting some of that burnt sienna. And then glazing with the yellow and burnt sienna there. And then just pure yellow. And I'm going to put some yellow on this bench. And then that other color. There we go. Okay, it's, I think it's pretty good. I might take some of the burnt sienna, put some on there, maybe the yellow. Kind of put some more glow on those trees over there. And then I want to get more the glazing liquid a little bit and I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to take the glazing medium with this color that we did for like the trees and I'm going to go over the tops a little bit Just so they're not so bright. So 
and not as bright in the picture. Okay, it's good. I like it. It's pretty. Okay, so I'm going to get my Faber-Castell Fit Artist Pen. I need the black one, not the white one. Probably not going to see the white one at all. So I'm going to sign it and I want to do it high enough off the sides of the board that kind of being being hard to put on there. I may have to do it since I just kind of went over this not too long ago. I may have to do that part later. So the painting we're doing next week is this beta fish. Um, it's really fun. I actually recorded this one before this right now. So it is super fun. Probably one of the most fun paintings I've done on YouTube so far. It was like really, really fun. So we're doing that and then we have the lake and the horse coming up. And then these are out already. So if you want to look at those, they're on my channel. And if you want to see the beta up close, that's him. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. If you paint it, you can share it with me on um, my Facebook group, Powers Painting Post. And if you join it, um, you can also participate in the polls for um, future videos. So you can help me pick which paintings you like the most. And hopefully I'll pick the same ones you do. So thanks for watching. Bye.